Finally, NASA breaks its silence. Yes, there is an ocean world on Saturn's moon Enceladus. This gives us a hot candidate for life in the solar system. Enceladus is one of Saturn's largest moons and is bubbling with ice volcanism. But that's not all. This moon also hosts one of the largest saltwater oceans in the entire solar system. What researchers discovered there and what this thing, this snake drill, is all about will leave you speechless. Enceladus, an active ice moon. For a long time, researchers assumed there wasn't much going on on the moons in the solar system. Too small, too cold, too far away and too dark. But that was a mistake. Since the best probes that humans have ever built have been investigating the solar system ever more intensively, we know on Enceladus and on many other bodies in the solar system, there is liquid water. Yes, you heard right. Although these moons are icy cold on the surface, they harbor liquid water in the depth. This mystery applies not only to Enceladus, but to a whole host of moons and some dwarf planets on the edge of the Kuiper Belt. The James Webb Space Telescope has now made an additional discovery on Enceladus that has confirmed the long-suspected presence of large amounts of liquid water. The moon, tiny compared to Saturn, shoots gigantic fountains of water into space. This water vapor forms a trail in the fantastic rings of the gas giant Saturn. Cryovolcanoes bubble in the depths of this celestial body, which only looks dull and frozen at first glance. Incredible things must be going on inside the moon, and possibly an ocean harbors life forms we could not have imagined before. What did James Webb find? James Webb's images show dozens of ice fountains forming over cracks in the ice. Shining brightly, they stand out against the dark space. These fantastic formations can be seen thanks to special filtering techniques used by Webb's cameras. The fountains can extend hundreds of kilometers from the surface. When a team of NASA researchers took a closer look at the latest images, they saw a fountain near the moon's south pole that was much larger than any of the others. At more than 9,500 kilometers long, the fountain is the largest ejection of water ever seen in space. Imagine this fountain being 20 times taller than Enceladus is wide and extending far enough to reach from North Cape to Malta. James Webb's photos show Enceladus forming a ghostly halo around the planet Saturn with its water vapor fountain. This high level of water activity makes Enceladus the main source of water in the entire Saturn system. The halo, or torus, left by Enceladus forms most of Saturn's E-ring, the largest outer ring. Webb's instruments were also able to determine that most of the water droplets are emitted into space from the vapor that Enceladus regularly emits. During its 33-hour orbit, the moon sprays water vapor far around Saturn. Its mega fountain blows an astonishing 300 liters per second into space as it does so. Webb's observations showed that about 30% of this water remains in the moon's immediate vicinity, while 70% is dispersed throughout the Saturn system. James Webb can do much more than take impressive photos. The light emissions from the water vapor fountains are an open book for this super telescope. In the water, or rather the spectrum of light scattered by that water. Researchers found evidence of organic compounds that can react chemically to produce amino acids. And amino acids are the building blocks of life on Earth. Perhaps a future cryovolcanic eruption captured by Webb will show us signs of life in the moon's hidden ocean world. On the trail of life with drills. That Enceladus has sub-Iridian oceans is already known from some of Hubble's photos. Measurements have shown that one of the largest oceans of the solar system must be located inside and under kilometer-thick ice. Already before James Webb, NASA had already planned an expedition to this moon. Modern drilling systems are to bore into the depths of the ice and search for life there. The prototype drill that will eventually make the journey into space is a high-tech instrument that moves through the ice like a snake. This state-of-the-art device not only looks like a snake, but was inspired by the movement of animals that move gracefully on land and in water. Scientists will use the snake drill to bore through Enceladus's thick ice and take samples from its subsurface ocean. 
NASA and other international partners are planning an ambitious mission to Enceladus to launch later this decade. Scientists believe the hydrothermal vents on Enceladus's seafloor could provide the perfect environment for microbial life, much like the black smokers in the depths of our own oceans. The planned mission will not only use snake drills, but will also carry a suite of other advanced instruments that can accurately analyze the chemical composition of the water and search for signs of life. Wet chemistry is an analytical method that uses colorimetry, gravimetry, and titration to detect elements and compounds in liquid samples. Elemental analysis determines the elements present in compounds, especially nonmetals such as carbon and hydrogen. A robot or probe equipped with such an instrument could determine the exact chemical composition of water to provide clues to possible organic compounds or other elements essential to life. To do this, the probe would not even have to drill down to depth. A sample from one of the fountains would probably be enough to find traces of carbon, amino acids, and life. In addition to organic analysis, probes with specialized sensors could detect the presence of minerals or other compounds in the fountains. These sensors could send real-time data to Earth for rapid interpretation and response to detected anomalies. For practical applications on Enceladus, these instruments and techniques will be integrated into autonomously operating robots and probes. Currently, the best engineers and most innovative minds in the world are working on the techniques that will be capable of operating in the extreme environment of the moon. These robots could land on the surface and position themselves near active fountains to take direct samples. Alternatively, flying probes could pass through the fountains and collect samples from the water vapor cloud. The integration of real-time analyzers would allow data to be processed immediately and provide valuable information about the chemical composition and potential for life on Enceladus. This is what life on Enceladus could look like. Are you now also wondering what life on Enceladus might look like, how it evolved, and where it came from? Let's take a fictional trip to the moon and back in time together. Billions of years ago, when the solar system was young, a comet collided with Enceladus. This comet was not just any comet. It carried with it tiny, primitive bacteria from the farthest reaches of the universe. When the comet impacted, these bacteria merged with Enceladus's icy waters and began to multiply in the deep, warm oceans beneath the ice crust. In this dark, high-pressure environment, far from sunlight and oxygen, these bacteria evolved in amazing ways. They learned to harness the geothermal energy of hydrothermal vents. In this world of perpetual ice and darkness, luminous bioluminescent creatures emerged, filling the depths with a shimmering bluish light. Time passed, and life on Enceladus took on ever more complex forms. Fascinating creatures emerged that had adapted to extreme conditions. Giant, transparent jellyfish with long tentacles that emit electrical pulses. Fish-like creatures with antennae that can receive radio waves. And microscopic organisms that live in symbiosis with the larger creatures, helping them filter nutrients from the water. Some scientists believe Enceladus has existed for billions of years. Life may have evolved long before life began on Earth. Other scientists speculate that life developed more recently, when conditions on Enceladus became favorable. If life does exist on Enceladus, could it evolve in a similar way to Earth, when sea creatures eventually became mammals and eventually humans? This is an exciting question, and astrobiologists always assume that life adapts perfectly to its environment. Evolution can occur, but it does not 